Welcome to another tutorial for Android Studio and Android development. In this program we're going to create a matchmaker or a love gauge and so we're going to enter in two different names and then compare them to see how compatible they are. So let's put in somebody's name here like Anne and Andy and see what they get. So the check mark. Now when I click the compare button you're going to see that there's a needle that shows that these are somewhat compatible. However, let's try some other names. Let's put in something that's less like each other. Let's put in like, oh, uh, well, let's try Jack and Diane and see what they get. So the compatibility is based on the uh, spelling of the names, how similar they are, how many letters they share. So it's real, not real accurate as far as true love life, but it's a fun app to make. What we'll illustrate here is a couple of things. We're going to create a, a function that will compare letters into different strings. We're going to use the regular components like the uh, edit texts, the buttons, and then similar to what we did with the spin the bottle tutorial in the last tutorial we're going to have a, a needle an object a graphic object that will spin but this is not a random spin this is based on the formula that we're going to create to compare the two names so let's get started so let's create a new project let's say let's call this love match or something like that so let's go to main xml and let's build our interface Here's a good example of rendering problems that just come out of nowhere. If you get this, you can probably just change your theme here to uh, one of these other themes. Let's try black. There, so I created a theme called light that seems to work better. So let's start creating the items here. So first of all, we're going to, let's just use the text view that's there and let's uh, put in some values. Okay, so we have a couple of text views and two edit text views. Notice the uh, hint text is uh, provided here instead of just a blank. So this gives us a little information about what we're supposed to enter. Also, let's, um, let's change the uh, width here. So when it says well, layout width, let's change this to uh, fill parent. So it fills up the entire width of the screen. It's a personal preference, but it seems to work well here. Now, as you saw in the original design, there was a gauge. There was this love meter. It was a kind of a heart-shaped thing and then a needle that moved on top of it. So that's a form of two pictures. So if you were to find something, let's go look for a gauge without a needle. And you could use um, maybe one of these pictures here, any of the clip art that you can find. And then you can put that into your graphic. So then maybe you search for a gauge needle and something like this would fit well. When you're done, you'll have two pictures and import them into your project. So you can see that I've downloaded and did some editing. I have uh, the background for the meter, and then I also have an arrow or a needle. And so both of these are ping files. They have transparent backgrounds. So I'm going to copy them and put them into my project. You will probably have different backgrounds and different arrows, depends on your choices. So I'm going to the drawable folder here in the resources area and I am pasting in my pictures. So I should have two. Once those are in, then we can add some image views. So I'll add the image view to be about centered. Double click it and let's change the source. So for this one, let's change this to IV for the, for the ID, IV underscore meter. Now I'm going to add an image view right on top of this one. And let's change the source here to the arrow. Or I think I called it the needle. There it is, needle. And let's change the IV needle for the ID. So I have two image views, a couple of edit texts, and a text view. So one more thing we need to add here is the compute button. The one that will tell us to calculate the results here. So let's drop a button in right below the heart. We're ready to start programming. Okay, so we have all of our IDs listed here on the right side. And you can see the layout here. So yours should look something similar. 
Let's go into the code now. Let's go into the Java file and let's start building our application. First thing we need to do is start defining some of the buttons that we know we're going to use. So let's use uh, the button um, compute and let's use the uh, image view. We're going to have to work on the needle. Okay, so the uh, item that we're going to listen for for the click is the button, so let's add an, an event listener. When we click the button, we're going to get the two strings that the user entered, which is the two names, and then we'll compare the results and we'll spin the dial based on the, uh, the compatibility number. So let's get some strings defined. Okay, so we have two strings. Now we're going to compare those two strings to see how similar they are. Okay, so here's the formula we're going to use to compare two names. We're going to look at each letter of the name, and so when we find a match, we'll add one to a score. So, in this case, we found one G to match the first jo of letter of George, and so we'll give that a plus one. So we have a total of one. Then we go to the second letter of George, and we look through here, and we find we've got one, and then we have another E there, so that's two more matches, gives us a total of three. We move to the next letter, and we find a match of an O, so there's a plus one. We move on to the R, there's no matches in Henoveva for zero extra, and so we stay at four. The G again, we get a plus one because there's one match, and we get a total of five. The E's, we get two more matches here, so we got Henoveva's got two E's in it, and this gives us a plus two for a total of seven. Now, let's switch the names, and let's go through Henoveva letter by letter and look at George. And so we're going to give this a plus 2 for the G, and then the E's are going to give us an also a plus 2. And so we're getting up to 11 now. The N, we get strike out with N, there's nothing there. We go to O, we get a plus 1. The V, we get nothing. And then the E, we are going to get something. We get two more on E. So you can see we're just looping through the words and we're trying to find letters that match. So when we get done, we're going to have a total of 14 matches. So if we add up the total letters of Henoveva and George, we're going to get 14 letters. Now we found 14 matches. When we do a division, we get 14 divided by 14 is a 100% match. Now that is a pretty good match. So Henoveva and George are going to come up really high on the match. However, here's another pair, Jack and Jill. You can see that the letter J matches in there, so we get a two matches out of eight letters, and we'll get a 25% number. And so Jack and Jill kind of come out a little bit less than you'd expect. Okay, now let's get back into our program. How are we going to implement that counting routine? Well, we're going to get a, uh, two loops going on here. So let's come up with a couple of uh, variables. Let's go with a... Uh, We'll have a total letters, and uh, that total letters is going to be the total letters of both names. So let's uh, take our your name, and there is a function there that tells us uh, how many letters are in there. It's just the length. So we'll do length of one word times the, uh, or plus the length of the other. So the other person name, and we'll add their length. So now we have the total letters. That one is pretty easy. Let's do total matches now. Let's start with zero. And we're going to start looping through these things. So, so we're going to use for loops here. And we're going to actually end up doing a double for loop. And so now, how are we going to count? We're going to use an i for our first counter, and let's use j for our second counter variable. Now i is going to be starting from 0. And i is going to be less than the your name. And let's make the increment by 1. So the second is going to be J. So J starts at 0. Okay, we've got an error here. We have to have the length 
So we have the length and not just the, uh, the string. So now we're going to check if the letters match. Okay, so you can see from the code that we're looping through the uh, first name and then we're looping through the second name and we're counting the total matches. Now let's copy this because we want to use the reverse. We want to copy and paste so we can look at these names in a different order. So let's look at the other person's name and then look at your name. So just reverse everything. There. So when we look at comparing both words, we're going to have a uh, total number of matches. So now we need a new variable, a float. Remember, a float is a decimal number because we're going to be doing some division. So we want to take the uh, total matches and we're going to uh, divide that by the total letters. So that'll be our compatibility number. So it's a percentage from 0 to 100. I suppose we could give even greater than 100. Now, just to see so we can do some testing, let's uh, do a toast here. So let's run this and see what the test comes out to be. So I've got George and Henoveva listed in my uh, two names. Let's do the compute. And it says your compute score, or your compatibility score is zero. Something went wrong. Let's see what might have gone wrong. So we could come back into here and look at our data and see that we are doing some integer division here and we are converting it into a float. So what I need to do is I need to convert one of these guys or typecast them into a float before I do the division. Let's see if that helps. Okay, so I'm running the application again. I'm going to type George and Henoveva and do the compute and I'm getting a 0.85%. Okay, so that looks a lot better than what we had before at zero. I'm going to make one more change here. Notice I've typed in George and Hanoveva again in lowercase g and both of those. And so now when I do my compute, I get a love score of 100%. Now, why did I get an 85 before and now I'm getting 100? It's because the capital G in the uh, letter George is not the match with the lowercase g. So we should be able to compare these words with case insensitivity. So let's go back to where we converted our, our fields into strings here. So after we compute to string, let's go to dot and to, let's choose a, choose to lowercase for both of these. So that way we do lowercase letters on comparison so now it should make no difference whether the letters are capitalized or not. Okay, I'm back in the code now. Now I want to have this uh, compatibility score as an integer. So I'm going to be rotating my uh, little needle around and I want to have an integer that is the same as the compatibility score. So I'm going to call this thing the love score. So first of all, I'm going to cast the uh, love score as an integer of the compatibility score. However, I would also like to take the compatibility score and let's um, let's multiply that by 100. So instead of uh, 0.85, I'm going to get the number 85. Now I'm going to take away 50. Now the reason why I'm going to do that is because, as you know, the needle is going to move. Let's say if it's less than 50, it'll move to the left. If it's greater than 50, it'll move upward toward the right. And so my love score is a number between negative 50 and a positive 50. So there's some notes to say the love score is between negative 50 and one and a positive 50. Let's make one more change here. Notice I added a parentheses before and after the uh, compute score times 100. So we want to multiply by 100 and then round off to an integer and then subtract 50. So I got my order of operations a little bit better here. You'll recall that we have a, a rotation, rotation animation. And this is uh, going to be a review from our bottle. So our rotation is going to go from zero to the uh, love score. 
And now the other routines are relative to yourself and uh, the axis. So recall from what we did earlier and we'll repeat from our bottle example. I'm going to actually just toss in an extra 360 degrees so that the arrow will do a full rotation plus the love score. A couple more things we need to do for the animation. Okay, so copy that code there. That should set the options for making our needle move. And um, let's go and put in our final toast. And let's run the program. Let's try with Jack and Jill next and let's compute them. And they get a negative 25, so not so good. It looks like we've got ourselves a spinning dial and your application's running.